Hello everyone. Today we are going to speak about sustainable development. The term sustainable development refers to the form of economic development that leads to material progress but ensures that the future generations have some resources left to utilize. It is an organizing principle whereby human development goals are achieved while simultaneously sustaining the ability of natural systems to provide natural resources on which the economy and the society depend. Traditionally, the idea of development was only concerned with consumption of resources. However, with the idea of sustainable development, the parameter of environment was introduced into the same idea. Until now, economy was only built on exploitation of resources and increasing income. But sustainable development also takes into account the environmental impact of development. Now let us discuss the history and background of this term. The environmental impact of economic development was first raised in the post-war era by Rachel Carson who wrote a book The Silent Spring. This book concerned itself with the negative impacts of DDT on uh, agriculture and the sensitive environmental zones. Thus, it was beginning of the development of an environmental movement which drew attention to the relationship between economic growth and development and environmental degradation. The book became hugely successful and it sparked a multitude of scholars and academicians raising the same issue. An MIT research group was established which had many scholars like William Flynn Martin, David Dodson Gray and Elizabeth Gray who prepared for hearings that were organized by the US Congress. Based on the discussions and debates that were sparked by Rachel Carlson's book, the Club of Rome was formed in 1968 by Aurelio Pecci and Alexander King. It was founded in Italy and had over a hundred members constituting of former heads of state, diplomats, etc. In 1972, the Club of Rome published its most famous report titled Limits to Growth. This report was essentially a compu based on computer simulations which came to the conclusion that economic growth cannot continue indefinitely because of shortage of resources. Owing to the 1973 oil crisis, the fears of the public were heightened greatly and this report got even more fame than before. The re researchers in the report came to the following conclusions. A. Global industrial output per capita will reach a peak around 2008 and will be followed by a rapid decline. Global food per capita will reach a peak about 2020 and then again decline. Global services per capita will reach a peak around 2020 and then decline. Global population will reach a peak in 2030 and will be followed by a rapid decline. Growth trends existing in 1972 could be altered so that the sustainable ecological and economic stability could be achieved. The sooner the world's people start striving for the second outcome, the better the chance of achieving it. Next, we come to the Brundtland Commission of 1987. This commission was titled World Commission on Environment and Development. It was also known as Brundtland Commission because it was named after Norwegian Prime Minister Gro Harlem Brundtland. This commission was established by the UN General Assembly and it wanted to focus mainly on the following terms. A. To propose long-term environmental strategies for achieving sustainable development. To recommend ways in which concern for the environment may be translated into greater cooperation among developing countries and between countries at different stages of economic and social development. C. To consider ways and means by which the international community can deal more effectively with environmental concerns. And lastly, to help to define shared perceptions of long-term environmental issues and of the appropriate efforts needed to deal successfully with the problems of protecting and enhancing the environment. The Brundtland Commission 
defined sustainable development as it is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Brundtland Commission's final report, titled Our Common Future, laid the groundwork for the convening of the 1992 Earth Summit at Rio and the Agenda 21 and also the Commission on Development of the Commission on Sustainable Development. Now let us understand the definition of the word sustainable development. The Our Common Future report that was published by the Brundtland Commission defines sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the future. The concept of needs in particular, the essential needs of the world's poor, should be given overriding priority. The term is also defined as the practice of maintaining world processes of productivity by replacing resources used with resources of equal or greater value without degrading or endangering natural biotic systems. Sustainable development ties together concern for the carrying capacity of natural systems. Carrying capacity refers to the amount of resources that can be used by a group of people living in a particular environment without damaging the chances of the future generations. Now let us discuss the features of sustainable development. In sustainable development, the attempt is to minimize greenhouse gases reduce global warming and preserve environmental resources. Greenhouse gases are those that surround the Earth's atmosphere and stop heat from escaping back to space, thereby raising the Earth's uh, temperature by a large degree. Second feature of sustainable development is emphasis on green architecture. Usually, architecture and build building requires cement, rocks and so on that are very environmentally harmful. And sustainable development focuses more on use of wood and other biodegradable material. Lastly, renewable resources of energy are encouraged in sustainable development such as electric vehicles, solar power, batteries, etc that do not rely upon hydrocarbon based fuels. Sustainable development puts a great deal of emphasis on solar and wind energy. Both of these sources are renewable, that is, it does not depend on non-renewable energy sources such as hydrocarbons which can one day get exhausted. Secondly, protection of natural habitats are also the focus of sustainable development. Thirdly, any amount of resources that are used should be replaced properly. That means that if uh, for the purpose of acquiring wood, forests are cut down, then that same forest should be again uh, regrown again. And finally, pollution should be reduced in industrial practices. Most industries especially the ones based on non-renewable energy sources give out a lot of pollutants and irritants which not only are uh, responsible for causing global warming but also impacts the health of human beings. Let us discuss the elements of sustainable development. The elements are divided into four sections economic, ecological, political and cultural. Firstly, economic elements. The first element is production and resourcing. In sustainable development, production is done using uh, energy and resources that are renewable. Second element, accounting and regulation. To make sure that all the financial resources that are utilized are held accountable to the public, and are regulated properly. Third economic element is labor and welfare. All the financial resources that are generated from sustainable development are distributed equitably among the people, uh, among the workers and not just 
uh, accumulated by the rich and the prosperous. Next come the ecological elements. Sustainable development ensures that the development, the economic development should not harm the quality of water and air that is consumed by the people, nor should it harm the flora and fauna that is plants and animals of the region. Next come the political elements. The first element, first political element is organization and governance. Organization and governance are essential for sustainable development as planning comes from a governmental level itself. Law and justice. Laws are necessary to keep industries and companies from polluting the environment and in case these companies do pollute environment, they are to be brought to justice which thereby prevents and warns other uh, wrongdoers from committing the same crimes. Security and accord. Security can be of many types. Environmental security, that is receiving a proper environment, water, air to consume, is also a form of security and security should not be only seen through terms of physical security. Now, let us solve multiple choice questions. Question 1. Which book among these sparked a discussion on environmental impact of development? A. The Uninhabitable Earth B. The Silent Spring C. The End of Nature or D. Feral Answer. Option B. The Silent Spring The Silent Spring was a book that was published in 1962. The name of the author was Rachel Carl Carson. The book focused on uh, the environmental impact of DDT and pesticides, which had improved yield a lot, agricultural yield, but at the same time, it had done a great deal of environmental damage. And also, it had impacted the health of people in the working in the agricultural sector. Next question. Which of the following is not a feature of sustainable development? A. Usage of renewable sources of energy. B. Use of conventional methods of construction. C. Reduction of pollution, both air and water. D. Replacement of used resources. Correct answer. B. Use of conventional methods of construction. Sustainable development focuses on green architecture, meaning usage of materials in construction that are environment friendly. Conventional methods cause a lot of pollution and that is something sustainable development seeks to avoid.